In this video, we'll prove that given that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is L, and that the limit as x approaches c of g of x is M, and that M is not 0, the limit as x approaches c of f of x over g of x is L over M. The precise definition of the meaning of the statement, the limit as x approaches c of f of x is L, is, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that if the absolute value of x minus c is greater than zero and less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus L is less than epsilon. The definition similarly applies to the statement the limit as x approaches c of g of x is m. So we are given that we can specify as small a positive value of epsilon as we want within which we can make f of x to l and always find an interval around c plus or minus some delta where f of x is within epsilon of L, except maybe right at C. Likewise with g of x and m. So given the definition of the limit, what we need to prove in this case is that given that the limit as x approaches C of f of x is L, and that the limit as x approaches C of g of x is m, and m is not zero, for all values of epsilon, there exists a value of delta such that if the absolute value of x minus c is greater than zero and less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x over g of x minus l over m is less than epsilon. Now if we had been given that the limit as x approaches c of 1 over g of x is 1 over m, we could have simply applied the product law of limits, which we proved in a recent video. But we have been given that the limit as x approaches c of g of x is m. So in the rest of this video, we will prove that given that the limit as x approaches c of g of x is m, the limit as x approaches c of 1 over g of x is 1 over m. And from there, we will be able to say, using this proof and the product law of limits, that given that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is L, and that the limit as x approaches c of g of x is m, and that m is not equal to zero, the limit as x approaches c of f of x over g of x is L over m. The limit as x approaches c of g of x is m. So as x approaches c, the absolute value of g of x, of course, approaches the absolute value of m. And since the absolute value of m is positive, and that it isn't zero is one of our premises, the absolute value of m over 2 is less than the absolute value of m. Now, since we can get g of x arbitrarily close to m, we can definitely say that there exists a delta such that when the absolute value of x minus c is greater than zero and less than delta, the absolute value of m over two is less than or equal to the absolute value of g of x. So why are we doing this? Very soon we're going to substitute the absolute value of m over two for the absolute value of g of x. So since the limit as x approaches c of g of x is m, for all positive epsilon, there exists a delta such that if the absolute value of x minus c is greater than zero and less than delta, then the absolute value of g of x minus m is less than epsilon. So let's make epsilon equal to the expression epsilon times the absolute value of m times the absolute value of m over two. So we can say that there exists a positive value of delta such that if the absolute value of x minus c is greater than zero and less than delta, then the absolute value of g of x minus m is less than epsilon times the absolute value of m 
times the absolute value of m over 2 for any positive values of epsilon. Absolute value expressions are commutative, so we can also write that for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0, such that if the absolute value of x minus c is greater than 0 and less than delta, then the absolute value of m minus g of x is less than epsilon times the absolute value of m times the absolute value of m over 2. So here are two things we have derived that we will soon use given that the limit as x approaches c of g of x is m. That for all epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 such that if the absolute value of x minus c is greater than 0 and less than delta the absolute value of m minus g of x is less than epsilon times the absolute value of m times the absolute value of m over 2 and the absolute value of m over 2 is less than or equal to the absolute value of g of x. Now let's make the expression the absolute value of 1 over g of x minus 1 over m. This would be part of the consequent inequality of the implication we are trying to prove. If we can show that for any epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 such that if the absolute value of x minus c is greater than 0 and less than delta, then this is less than epsilon. Then we have proven what we set out to prove. We can combine the fractions and take advantage of the fact that the absolute value of a product of factors is equal to the product of the absolute values of the factors to get the expression on the right. We have shown that there is always a positive delta such that if the absolute value of x minus c is greater than 0 and less than delta, then the absolute value of m over 2 is less than or equal to the absolute value of g of x. And when this is the case, since reciprocals flip inequalities, we can say that 1 over the absolute value of g of x is less than or equal to 1 over the absolute value of m over 2. We can then say that the absolute value of 1 over g of x minus 1 over m is less than or equal to the absolute value of m minus g of x over the absolute value of m times the absolute value of m over 2. So now we can say that for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0, such that if the absolute value of x minus c is greater than 0 and less than delta, then the absolute value of 1 over g of x minus 1 over m is less than or equal to the absolute value of m minus g of x over the absolute value of m times the absolute value of m over 2. But we found earlier that for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that if the absolute value of x minus c is greater than 0 and less than delta, the absolute value of m minus g of x is less than epsilon times the absolute value of m times the absolute value of m over 2. Therefore, we can say that the absolute value of m minus g of x over the absolute value of m times the absolute value of m over 2 is less than epsilon times the absolute value of m times the absolute value of m over 2 over the absolute value of m times the absolute value of m over 2. And we stipulated that m is never 0, so the absolute values of m times the absolute value of m over 2 cancel out. So, for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0, such that if the absolute value of x minus c is greater than 0 and less than delta, then the absolute value of 1 over g of x minus 1 over m is less than epsilon. This proves that given that the limit as x approaches c of g of x is m, and m is not 0, the limit as x approaches c of 1 over g of x is 1 over m. 
Now that we can say that given that the limit as x approaches c of g of x is m, and that m is not zero, that the limit as x approaches c of 1 over g of x is 1 over m, we can use the product law of limits to say that given that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is l, and that the limit as x approaches c of g of x is m, and that m is not zero, the limit as x approaches c of f of x over g of x is l over m.